Oh, hello. My name is Parker, and um, I'm a photographer. I'm a story creator. I'm a teacher. Uh, I'm a mentor. And today, I'm in a bear suit. I found a new book while researching for my upcoming workshop in France in three weeks. Still have a couple seats available if you if you want to go. And um, I uh, found this book at a a coffee shop and it's written in 1970 and it's called Special Problems. I wonder what kind of special problems they had in 1970 in the photography world. That is almost 50 years. Now I'm not really good at math, I just know this because I was born a couple years prior to that and I'm turning 50 this year. So that's how I did the math there. There is little or no uh, alcohol in my coffee this morning as well. Just have that be known. I wear a bear suit almost every morning. So without further ado, and please feel free to make some comments here uh, with questions or whatnot that we can uh, answer after I read um, some select excerpts from this book. Um, I'm filming here in my, in my home with my book collection where this book will end up now. Um, and you can see my book collection. I don't know whether you can see up there. It's, it's uh, a lot from the past, like, you know, 1970s and 80s, a little bit 90s. Um, Jason Group, I love you too, buddy. Oh, it's so good to see you on here. Thanks. Um, so I have, uh, uh, wait, Fred says, uh, bring them on camera. Oh, wait, no. No, I don't want to bring Fred on camera. Uh, Jane says, have you read me this morning? What a way to start the day. Well, James, I would like to hear you read to me too, especially about some of your crazy directing jobs and things. What have you been up to? Get a hold of me. Anyway, again, little or no alcohol in this coffee. Okay, so um, I think that's a Jerry Gionis book right on the end there, right next to Elliot Irwin. Uh, Nigel Perry, uh, or no, it's not Nigel Perry. Yeah, it is Nigel Perry. I can't read. And, yep, that's that. And that is a 1967 Gibson. That's right. It sounds amazing. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to read a little bit from this book that I found in a coffee shop that is called Special Problems. So I went through and just to give you an idea of some of the chapters in here. Chapter one, the harsh environment. It is harsh, isn't it? Chapter two, obstacles, obstacles of setting. Well, I guess if there's something in your chair, you should just move it, right? Okay, problems of the professional. Well, <laughs> Jason Group, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, mechanical failure. Again, Jason, no, I'm kidding. I'm beating you up because you're on here and that's just awful. Uh, mechanical failure, we've all had mechanical failures, or have we? But you will, someday you'll have a mechanical failure, um, whether it be in your car or your hair dryer or your toothbrush or other thing. A uh, camera, I guess this is more directed to. Photographing action, nice. Uh, the assigned problem and the deliberate mistake. That's the way I photograph right there. It's a deliberate mistake. I meant to do that when I fell down and the shutter accidentally went off. That happens, right? Okay, so um, let's read. I went through and I found a couple little things that I thought were super interesting, especially that I got this book to do research on the way I teach. And the way I teach my workshops are a little strange and uh, a little challenge-based. Um, I try to teach people how to teach themselves, how to overcome any obstacle thrown at them. Because we as photographers, when we go out on the day, we have no idea what we're gonna get thrown at us, whether it be any of these problems that we just talked about or just like uh, someone who's not nice. That could happen too. So. Um, so I was reading this and I was like, oh my gosh, 1970s, that's what they were teaching at RIT. Crazy. Who knew? So here we go. I'm going to read this for you. All right. I'm going to look down like this. So it looks like a bear's really reading to you right after I have another drink of coffee. Ah, okay. Here we go. Here we go, folks. 
<sighs> a former member of RIT faculty, Ralph Hattersley, once compared the teaching of photography with a classic tale of a blind man trying to describe an elephant. One man who had taken hold of the elephant's tail maintained that the animal was long and slithery, like a snake. Mm, that's crazy. Another ran his fingers over the animal's leg and insisted the elephant was huge, wrinkled cylinder, like the trunk of a giant tree. What? That's crazy. Such is the case with photography. Hattersley maintains, the field has grown so gigantic and complex. This is 1970, folks. And the field of photography has grown so gigantic and complex that no one can grasp all of it. And photography teachers must grope their way. Now, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think photography teachers should be groping at all. I'm just going to say it. You guys, keep your hands to yourself. You girls especially, keep your hands to yourself. Okay, we have lost our main means of determining what goals our students should pursue. How can we know what to teach them all? The faculty at RIT solved this predicament by teaching the students to deal creatively with challenges. Any of you who have been to my workshop over the last five or six years know what we're talking about there, don't we? Photographic assignments are treated as special problems. We try to give the students sufficient technical background so they can solve the problems that they will confront, says Tim Wilson, staff chairman at the School Photographic Illustration Department. Sometimes the problems are purely technical. How do we arrange the lighting for a strong, effective portrait? What kind of camera do we choose? What film, what developing, and what printing methods? Our IT students are bombarded with technical information on strobe lights, umbrella reflectors, developing compounds, and printing tricks. But in most of the problems that students are asked to solve, technique merges with interpretation. Big word there that I love. I love me some good interpretation. The picture of the halved cabbage on the opposite page there it is. It kind of looks like the Earth ooh, orbiting around. This halved cabbage on the opposite page resulted in the assignment to produce a high quality print using one of the various lab techniques taught in the freshman introductory course. By emphasizing contrast, Hugh Barton, that's who made that, uh, transformed the image of a rather humble vegetable into photographic design of singular beauty and origina <coughs> originality. Um, first of all, I don't think a, um, a cabbage is humble. I think they're very complex, and I think they're really, um, really uh, undershooting the cabbage there. I like a good cabbage, especially when it's made into sauerkraut. Right. Um, the problems are even more challenging in the upper class courses. One instructor assigns his second year students to photograph any ordinary object, a glass of water, a lamppost, a piece of Swiss cheese, and by means of lighting and composition only, give it an aspect of monumentality. Hang on. Monumentality. Monumental, monumentality. That's a 1970 word that I don't know, but I think it means of grand stature. Sure. Okay. Another posed the following problem to his seniors. I am an art director. I need a photograph which is based on the theme, the good old days. Its tone may be sentimental, nostalgic, ironic, playful, sad, silly, somber. Its content is up to you. And still another teacher who began his course by having students shoot pictures of sugar cubes ended it by asking them to indicate photographically their attitudes towards such sweeping concepts of death and sex. Well, that ends today's reading, and I think there's a lot of good teachings there, and I'm going to implement some of those, and I already have implemented almost all of those, actually. We didn't use sugar cubes, we used pencil, and, you know, those kind of things. Um, Adam says, funny thing about those sugar cubes. Yeah, you know where those are. 
Um, yes. So I'm going to now, I'm going to look through some of the questions that hopefully have come in. Uh, Chrissy Perkins wants more, more. Well, guess what, Chrissy? Tomorrow, tune in to the Big Bear here. And that didn't come out right. Tune in to Parker in a bear suit. That sounds better. Uh, and I will read another excerpt tomorrow. If, if, I get some, uh, if I get some hurrahs on that, I'll do that. Um, so now I'm going to bring this a little closer, which I know all you are going to like a lot, and I'm going to tune my voice down a little bit. And now I am going to look through the questions and see if there are any questions here. Let's see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Bring them on camera. I don't know what all this bring them on camera. Uh, Jason loves me. Okay, so I'm there. James Conway. Hey, Parker. Hey, Fred. How are you, buddy? Good to see you on here. Uh, why are we seeing a mirror image? Well, I don't know, uh, James, why you're seeing a mirror image. Um, because it looks right to me. Maybe I'm using the, the front and that's why. Um, but you know what? Using a mirror image isn't that bad. I shoot an 8x10, as Artemis calls it. I shoot a view camera where everything is flipped right and left and upside down. So to me, it would it's just kind of normal. Um, uh, uh, Andy Pigsley says, holy shit, pretty much spot on. I'm guessing he's talking about the bear suit. That's my guess. Um, or maybe the content that I was reading. But yeah, right? I read that thing and I was like, holy crap, 1970s. Uh, don't sweat the technique, Adam Brophy says. I agree. Uh, David Williams is on here. That's always good because I love that guy. He's amazing. Uh, funny thing about the shirt cues, more and more. Love the morning reading, says Fred. Thank you. Um, Aaron Costa, she wants to know where Rudolph is. And no, I'm not wearing Rudolph. Uh, see you in Vegas, baby, Anthony, David, Anthony Williams. No, I'm afraid not. I'm going to be in France. My workshop starts uh, March 5th through the 12th. It's a week long, and I'm going over early to get everything set up. We have this 27-room chateau and acres and a moat and all this crazy stuff. We have one, two, three, four models now, and it's going to be really amazing. So you should just come to France with your underpants or without, I don't care. I just had to make that joke. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's actually still a couple seats available. And, uh, especially if you're in Europe, you might as well just come on over. Um, uh, Marilyn Schoen is dying. Thanks for making my day. Well, you are welcome, Marilyn. Uh, let's see. Uh, can you explain your process for creative concepts? Tammy Blevins. I can, um, explain my process for creative concepts. They come from my stories. They come from my dreams, from things I write down. I write down all my dreams on this phone here um, and on paper. I also write a lot. I can give myself just a word and just go and come up with a concept. Um, and so can you. Everybody can do this. It's not something, you know, I believe that, that everybody has that creativity in them to tell a story. You just have to go back to kind of being a kid um, where it didn't matter if, if it was good or bad or whether you think you screwed up or not. You just did it. And that was being a kid. And um, that's kind of what I teach in my things. I get us back to the basics of being a kid, being the first time with a camera and there is no screwing up. It's just playing. It's magic still. Um, and it's not technical. I think this thing's a little too tight, don't you? Oh, that looks better. Um, so that's my process for creative concepts. I just kind of like throw words around and throw stories and um, come up with a concept. And then I use either um, my, uh, my still photography or film work to kind of be the translator for that, for the world. And, you know, they don't have to know where it started or anything. And it's like... Um, uh, it gets my point across. It gets my story across to the world as my translator. So I hope, Tammy, that helps you uh, answer your question. Um, David Anthony Williams wrote something in German. I can't read German. Sorry, buddy. Um, we, I miss you too, buddy. Uh, how much time, Adam wrote, how much time does the 
book suggests for individual uh, interpretation. Just want to be sure I'm not going over the suggested time limit. Well, since you opened that up, Adam, um, Adam has come to several of the workshops and he is always the violator. We just call him the violator because um, he just goes out and takes way too long for these things that have like a three minute time limit and you know 50 minutes later he comes back and everybody's mad at him so you can just call Adam Brophy the violator now um, so uh, it doesn't give a time limit but it should be enough to get the job done which evidently for you takes a little longer uh, Joe Payne says we lost R2 I'm guessing I I tapped out for a minute. In response to my own question, it's up to interpretation, right? Absolutely, Andy, it is up to interpretation. That is right. Audrey Goforth, I am so excited to be going to France. Audrey Goforth, I am so excited for you going to France. This is going to be amazing. It is unreal. I have been nonstop working on this. Um, we are going over the menu tomorrow. Uh, for the week, we have an amazing chef going with us. And now, I just found out we're going to have two chefs. <laughs> yes, holy crap. Trained, uh, trained in French cuisine um, and one trained in Italian cuisine. So that's going to be pretty crazy in this chateau. Um, uh, 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 Parker, you're a god. Ben Vallejo says, oh, come on. Come on. Uh, Tammy Blevins, thank you. I'm glad I could answer your question. And Aaron Costa, the time violator. Yes, Adam Brophy is. Um, okay, I guess that is all the questions out here today. Now, let's just take a quick peek uh, around my library. And uh, But tomorrow we're still going to read from the special problems. But maybe if we keep this going, I might read some more from up in there. Because it's kind of fun. So let's take a look and see what Parker's got on his shelf. What's he into? Let's see. And whoosh, I'm going to switch it around like that so you don't see my dirty laundry sitting there. Um, let's see. Hmm, how do I flip the camera? Got it. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's see, old Jeff Bridges. If you didn't know, he's a photographer. He's an amazing photographer. Of course, Abaddon, um, Nick Brandt, Harry Benson. Oh my gosh, I got to meet him a couple years ago. Stephen Glima, when I was a Canon Explorer of Light, uh, Stephen Glima was kind of my boss. And uh, he knew I loved Harry Benson so much that he introduced me to him and we got to hang out and drink coffee one day. And it was just a highlight of my my uh, photographic light. That guy, if you don't know Harry Benson's work, look it up. Um, um, yeah, Stephen Galima, thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you for pulling me in and, and allowing me to be an Explorer Light for eight years. And a printmaster. And just an all-around dork. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we're going to Mexico. Then we have a, a pig's foot in a jar. I don't know. Uh, Roger Ballin, uh, Peter, Peter Brewer Bevan. I got that when I was in Australia, which was kind of cool. Um, oh, Matthew Ralston, um, uh, Anton Kur. Oh my gosh, Joe Payne got me got me this book and a couple others by the same photographer, which is amazing. If you don't know his work, you need to check that out. Daga, gee, I wonder who got me that. Steve and Janie, you guys are amazing. Thank you guys. That was my my, my birthday gift this year when they came and did the birthday. Dennis Hopper, uh, Elliot Erwitt, Herman Leonard, Henry Cartier Brisson, uh, Mary Ellen Mark, uh, Snowden, which is amazing stuff. Uh, Yusuf Karsh, uh, gosh, there's just so many. Sam Jones. Um, Sebastian Salgado, my man, he's amazing. Uh, oh, Jerry Guiones, what? What is that doing on here? I don't have any modern photographers, what? But he's right here, right next to my, my beautiful sweetheart. Yep. Um, Jim Marshall, geez, all kinds of stuff. Rodney Smith, Andy Leibovitz, one of mine. Oh, anybody know what this is? Hmm, good morning. Parker, well, good morning, Donna. How are you? Does anybody know what this is? 
I will give you a special gift if anybody can tell me what this is in the next 30 seconds. Yep, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ah, oh, nobody got it. This is amazing. If you ever get a chance to see this show, please go see it. This is one of the handmade books that were available there. It's all like beeswax, torn page. Everything is hand printed in this book. Um, this is Gregory Colbert's project called Ashes and Snow. And it was probably one of the single most um, <laughs> experiential photographic experiences I have ever, ever, ever seen in my life. And at the time, it was... It was in um, Venice Beach, California, and we went to see it, and it's this thing called the Nomadic Gallery, and he builds the gallery right on the beach out of shipping containers and cardboard, and it's a massive gallery. Like, it, like uh, uh, it's the size, it's bigger than a football field, that big, and he creates this thing on the beach and houses all his works, and people walk through it. It's almost like a a church of sorts. It, it was for me, for sure. Um, it was the most amazing thing. And I think maybe he's still doing this. And then he picks it up, puts it on a ship, and takes it to another port somewhere and sets it up. So it travels around the world, and you get to see this work. And it's all printed like the size of a wall. It's ginormous. Um, and most everything he shoots on Polaroid. And a huge Polaroid. Uh, the 20 by 24 camera. And... It's all things that you just can't even believe. <laughs> like, it's insane. Um, so good stuff. Anyway, thank you for joining in today. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I hope to see you tomorrow for part two of reading with Parker in a bear suit. And let's see, what are we going to read tomorrow? Let me let me see my little, uh, my little deal here. Um, it is in the chapter deliberate mistakes and it's how to succeed by breaking the rules if any of you know me you know that's going to be a fun chapter okay everybody thanks for tuning in uh feel free to uh, reach out to me i am um again i have a workshop coming up in three weeks in burgundy france um and then i'm going to be releasing my schedule for workshops for the rest of the year um, and into next year that will be all over the United States and another one either another one somewhere else <laughs> okay stay tuned if you want to know about my workshops uh, send me an email Parker J at Parker J photo.com I'll put it down in the thing and um, Parker J at Parker J photo.com and I will put you on the list and um, and uh, give you some information on that. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you.